And then you would do what's called HVT, high value target strikes, where in the middle of the night, you'd be targeting high and mid-level cartel bosses, and you'd basically be showing the cartels that there's no safe place to operate. What's up everybody, Ryan here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to talk about the idea of the US military being used against the cartels. Before we get into it, check me out on Patreon. Got a whole bunch of dogfight videos popping up on there. And hey, if you wanna grab a Max Afterburner t-shirt, go to maxafterburner.co so you can rock one of those and support the channel. It would mean a lot to me. Let's dive in. So who wants to use the US military? Well, Dan Crenshaw, he's a representative from Texas, has joined forces with others in the House and has presented a bill that would allow for the use of military force in Mexico. And then Senator Lindsey Graham has stepped up and done the exact same thing in the Senate. They've actually got support of former Attorney General Bill Barr, and they're basically pushing forth this coalition to say, hey, we need to step up and take action against the cartels in Mexico. And part of that is in retaliation for what happened in 2019 when a group of Mormons were traveling down a road on their way to a wedding. Cartels stopped them and killed nine of those members, some of them children, and basically sparked the conversation in the US in recent times of why are we allowing these cartels to roam around Mexico and terrorize people and hey, accidentally take out Americans. And then it happened again in March of 2023 when four Americans were down in Mexico going for a medical procedure and they were kidnapped and two of them were killed by Mexican cartels. The cartels then rounded up those that were responsible in the cartel and sent a letter saying, hey, sorry about that. Uh, didn't mean to kill two Americans and we've taken the proper action against the cartel members that did because that's not how we operate. That was the Gulf cartel that said that. But again, it's just so interesting to me seeing like these mafia style entities just running around Mexico saying like, yeah, uh, we meant to kill someone else, not uh, those Americans, sorry about that. But what's powering the cartels? Why do they have such influence? Why are they able to just roam around with impunity? Well, it's worth saying that there's so much money flowing the Mexican drug cartels that they're kind of like their own little country with their own GDP. It's determined that in 2019, 30 billion dollars flowed from the US back into Mexico to pay for the drugs that were shipped up from Mexico. So when you're dealing with a $30 billion entity, it's a lot of different entities in Mexico. There's six main drug cartels, but when you're dealing with that, you're really gonna be up against something that carries a lot of weight, that has a lot of influence and sway and pressure on the government and on the local population. And then it's claimed that billions of dollars in fentanyl are flowing into Mexico as well from China. So not only are these cartels operating with impunity in Mexico, they're even to the point where they're importing a lot of their product from China and it's been said, it's been claimed that China's actually operating a soft war against the United States with this massive amount of fentanyl. A side story I have from you is someone I know is a sheriff in a little rural town in Montana. I asked him, what's your biggest problem? What's the biggest issue that plagues your mind that keeps you up at night? And he said, fentanyl. He said, literally SUVs will drive through his town and deliver fentanyl. And it's a crisis that even the, little, the littlest, the smallest town in Montana is having to fight against. And this is why it's claimed that there's a soft war against the United States from China. But it's also different when you think about ideology because when you look at the cartels, they don't have the same ideological backing that say something like, the Taliban or ISIS would have, where they literally feel like they're empowered by God to be in power. Instead, for the cartels, it's really just based on money and power and the fact that these cartels have basically intertwined themselves into the daily operations of Mexico because they've taken so much of their money and they've intertwined it into legitimate areas, like they've bought resorts. So a lot of the resorts in Cancun, Los Cabos, a lot of those are owned by cartel members. So they've literally intertwined themselves into the actual fabric of Mexican society. This is similar to what the mafia did in the 1920s to the 1950s in the USA, where especially in places like Las Vegas, they basically owned the entire town and the federal government had to roll in and create a presence and create a force that was bigger and stronger than the mafia. And oh, by the way, bringing that mafia 
into some of the legitimate businesses and allowing them to operate if they stayed clean and really having the resources to watch them and make sure they weren't involved in illicit activity anymore was one of the ways that the US federal government rooted out the mafia. So again, the federal government was more powerful and became an entity that could watch and be like, bad mafia, bad, do not do that. Do not take people out in the middle of the desert and have them never come back. That is not allowed here. But it's worth asking, has the US military ever been used against cartels before? Is there any precedent? I know that's what you're thinking to yourself, and I'm glad you asked. Let's dive into that right now. The US military was actually used in Colombia in 1993 to help catch Pablo Escobar. It was used in conjunction with the Colombian military, but there were facets of US Special Operations Forces that were deeply involved in the actual capture of Pablo Escobar. Why were they able to do this in Colombia? Well, first of all, they had a lot of support from the Colombian government because the Colombian government was facing pressure from the FARC, which is essentially an extremist group that was building massive cocaine distribution centers, massive cocaine grow operations, and they were working with Pablo Escobar to basically destabilize their entire nation. They didn't want this to happen, so the Colombian government saw that the US was willing to help and basically said, yeah, Uncle Sam, come on in, let's take care of this problem, because here in Colombia, we want our government to be stronger than the cartels themselves. Now, not that Colombia has zero corruption, but it seems to me through the research I've done that Colombia basically just has more of a willingness to wanna to step up and fight back against cartels. And that started in 1993, and then from then on, they've shown that they actually have the desire to root out these cartels. They signed something called Plan Colombia. At the time, President Bill Clinton and his staff created this plan to create an opportunity for Colombia to have a structure that would be more powerful than the cartels for the rest of their existence if everything went to plan. That plan involved military training, military resources, resources to root out corruption, and actual intervention by US military forces alongside Colombian forces forces to fight against the traffickers, to fight against the narcos. So what happened when that plan was instituted from 2001 to 2012, the distribution creation and the actual amount of cocaine inside of Colombia was reduced by 72%. They essentially took their country back with using all the different means in the spectrum that were possible. That was rooting out corruption, having a strong military themselves, and using resources from the US military to actually root out the actual drug cartels themselves. So why is this different than Mexico? Well, the amount of money that would flow into Colombia was less than what's flowing into Mexico currently. I mean, over $30 billion a year is just an insane number. But then again, you have the government having the desire to be more powerful than the drug cartels. Basically, they're stepping up and saying, you know what, no, we're taking our country back. And this seems to me that's something that we haven't seen in Mexico. Mexico kind of tiptoes around the issue and says, yeah, yeah, we need to fight against drug trafficking. We need to fight against these narcos. But are they really doing things to make it happen? It just seems that in Mexico, they're kind of just giving it lip service. They're like, yeah, yeah, we should definitely fight back against these cartels, but they're not actually taking action like they do in Colombia. Currently in Colombia, there are 200 US troops at all times who are there to help advise, to help train, to help acquire equip Colombian special forces and to help them detect radars that will detect drug trafficking aircraft. So they've really doubled down on support from the US and they've really put their money where their mouth is and they've said, yeah, come on in, let's root this out and let's not make this a thing in Colombia to have these drug traffickers be more powerful than the government, which it's like Mexico, where are you at? You gotta step up and show the same thing they're not doing that, which is why a lot of people in the US are calling for US military intervention because it's like, hey, we've given you the opportunity to handle this yourself, Mexico. Look, Colombia is an example of how this can be done correctly and you're just not doing it. You're allowing these things to continue and you're basically allowing for a state inside a state to take place where you've got basically a small country of drug traffickers and cartel members that are operating at, an, at a level that is higher and has more power than your government is operating at, which is just not acceptable, it doesn't make sense, and it doesn't give anyone here in the US the warm fuzzy that things are actually gonna be taken care of. 
Oh, I want to take a quick break as well and tell you about maxafterburner.co. Got some t-shirts that are launching on there and some other merch. I think you'll enjoy it. We got these nice tri-blend t-shirts. If you haven't noticed, I literally never take this thing off. So pop over there. I'll put a link in the description as well. Oh, and check out Patreon. I've got new videos launching on Patreon every week. I've got dog fights going up there and fighter pilot mindset videos that I know you'll love. Now back to the video. So why is corruption so high in Mexico? Well, it's worth noting that one kilo of cocaine in Mexico takes about 1500 US dollars to produce, to make, to ship, et cetera, to get it to the customer. But they can sell it for $66,000 on the streets of America. So that just shows how lucrative this drug trade really is. And this makes it hard for the Mexican police, for special forces operators, for teams inside of Mexico that are supposed to be legitimate to actually keep legitimate people on their teams and in the government itself. What can happen is a high level official can be bought off and then they'll kind of play a game of chess where they look and see which mid-level officers or lower level officers are doing a great job. We're gonna strategically reassign them somewhere else because they're doing a little bit too good of a job. Or if they're really good, then they'll just buy them off right out and now they don't have to deal with that issue anymore. So if the draw is higher to be a part of the cartels or to have the cartel intertwined into your community, rather than having the federal government intertwined into your community, you'll never get rid of this problem. So if Mexico can't step up and show that their federal government is more powerful or their state governments are more powerful than these cartels, then they're basically saying, it's like a kid sitting there saying like, I can't handle this myself. I can't take care of this myself. I need mom and dad to step in and take care of business. Even though they're not gonna say that right out, their actions will show that if they're not doing what they need to do. It's basically a cry for help without actually being a cry for help because they don't wanna say they can't handle it, but their actions are showing that they can't. So not that this is the best option, but once we've seen that they can't handle it, which, they, which they've basically shown for decades, so what's the option then? Well. The option is send in the US military and here's how it would go down. The Air Force would set up a massive amount of ISR, intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance along the southern border with aircraft that could also go into Mexican airspace that could be stealth drones. It could be other aircraft that are just saying like, hey, we're going in because you're not handling the job yourself. There are actually predator drones down along the southern border already. They're used in conjunction with the border patrol and homeland security, but that would be basically tripled or quadrupled where you'd have sensor operators that would operate out of places like Nevada and they would just be flying a constant patrol of drones over drug compounds and tracking the whereabouts and basically daily operations of cartel members. This would build a massive amount of intelligence so then when you have special operations forces that are ready to roll in, you would have the highest fidelity data possible. So they'd be going in with basically the other team's playbook due to the massive amount of ISR that the US military would use. And again, I'm not saying this is the best option, but it is essentially the only option if Mexico doesn't decide to do anything that has substance against these cartels. So you'd basically set up that ISR operation along the entire border and have the ability to go into Mexican airspace with stealth assets or other assets as needed. And then you would do what's called HVT high value target strikes where in the middle of the night you'd be targeting high and mid-level cartel bosses and you'd basically be showing the cartels that there's no safe place to operate. Now again, what's going to happen? Well, that vacuum is going to be filled by other mid-level lieutenants who will come in and take the place of those high-level cartel operators, but you're going to have to keep cutting the head off the snake and that's actually a strategy that's called retrenchment, which is you come back and you retrench, you wait for the snake to come back and then you go back in and cut the head off the snake, keeping those assets along the border, those ISR assets there, you'd basically at all times have the other team's playbook. So you'd be ready to rock, but you would have to continually do this. This isn't going to be a one and done. Obviously the US military's power and the ability to operate with special operations tactics is second to none. So you're going to roll in and take care of pretty much every cartel in the country within 72 hours, but then you're going to have to come back, wait for it to be rebuilt and then go and do it again. So this would be an ongoing situation. And some have said, well, the cartels have a lot of members on US soil, which is definitely true. And they've said that if we start to attack cartels in Mexico, they're going to begin to attack 
people in the US basically create little terror cells that will wreak havoc in the USA. I disagree with that because what might happen if that happens, if they start to attack people in the USA, it's just gonna be more of a call from the USA to go in and deeper root out these drug organizations. So what would most likely happen is these cartel members are gonna go silent. They're basically gonna disappear. Maybe they'll move to another country besides Mexico, somewhere where they can't be detected because they literally wanna operate underneath the radar. So if they start to attack people in the US, then even more and more resources will be used to root them out and fight them and that's the opposite of what they want. We could also use fighter jets send in teams of strike eagles. They could literally take off from their bases in mountain homes Idaho, take off, hit a tanker along the southern border, and then go in and take out targets. Now, a lot of the drug operation is intertwined into the civilian centers where population is everywhere. So you obviously aren't going to be dropping 2,000 pound JDAMs without crazy amounts of civilian damage, which would not happen. So you could take out centers that are out in the middle of nowhere, some grow operations or grow houses or production facilities that are not around centers where there's other people. You could roll in a team of Strike Eagles. They could even land in Phoenix, Arizona at Luke Air Force Base, get ready for the mission, take off, fly their mission, and just be based out of Luke Air Force Base for months at a time, and then rotate different Strike Eagle squadrons in to make that happen. But you're gonna do that only on pre-planned targets. So 2,000 pound JDAM is gonna be great if it's a facility out in the middle of nowhere, but if it's something that's inside a city center, which a lot of the drug operation is intertwined into the city centers of Mexico, now you're gonna need something a lot smaller. You're gonna need something like the bullet from a special operations member to go in and very highly destroy and target so that you're not having undue civilian casualties. And once those initial drug centers are taken out with those 2,000 pound JDAMs, you can bet pretty much every drug facility in the country is gonna scramble to intertwine itself into civilian centers. So at the very beginning of this operation, you'd be able to use Strike Eagles and other aircraft, but then that's gonna slowly dwindle to where then you would have to probably primarily focus on predator drone, something that has a little more specific of an ability to target specific people, high-level cartel bosses and mid-level lieutenants. So if we deem cartels narco-terrorists, what happens? What does that mean? What are the implications? Well, I'm glad you asked. You guys are asking such good questions. The deal is now you give the ability for people to claim asylum a little bit of a leg up because if they're running from narco-terrorists instead of organized crime, they might have the ability to immigrate into the US easier. So are we able to handle that? Obviously right now at the southern border, it's mayhem down there and it's hard to handle it as is. So we really have to take a hard look and see, are we able to handle the influx that will come if we deem these organizations narco-terrorists? We would also be destroying a relationship with a massive trading partner in Mexico. In 2019 alone, we traded over $680 billion with Mexico. So the livelihood of millions of Americans and millions of Mexicans depends on this relationship being strong. So that's definitely something we gotta wait. Do we really wanna go in and destroy this entire relationship? Or is there a way for us to thread the needle, hit the sweet spot, keep the relationship, and get rid of these narco cells? So what's the best option? Well, in my opinion, it would be something like Plan Colombia, but being called Plan Mexico, where we actually hold their feet to the fire and we say, look, you've gotta take out these specific cartel members who are wreaking havoc on the United States. And what we could do is we could focus on the cartels that are taking in massive amounts of fentanyl or literally any fentanyl at all. If they take in any fentanyl at all from China, we would say those cartels are now terrorist organizations, which would basically cut off all cartels from China. And then if we actually put some teeth behind it, where we go in and we take out some of the cartels that decide not to get rid of the fentanyl, now you've got the ability to see if Mexico will really step up and take care of business. If we do end up approving this authorization for use of military force, maybe it's just what we need to nudge Mexico and say, hey, we really mean it this time. If you don't go and take actual action against these cells, we're gonna do it because now we've actually approved this authorization for military force. So sometimes it's just the fact that you could do it that encourages someone to go and do it themselves. And maybe that's the kick in the you know what that Mexico needs. Thanks for watching my friends. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Go to maxafterburner.co, grab a t-shirt. It feels great, it's a tribe blend. I'm not taking this thing off if you haven't already noticed. And then pop over to Patreon, follow me over there. It's busting, it's popping. Got some awesome dog fights going up on the Max Afterburner Patreon. We'll see you all over there. And hey, check out another video. That's a, pretty much the best compliment you can give me. Most of all, have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.